Hello, today I'd like to talk about refurbishers. I'd like to talk about the business models that refurbishers have. I'd like to talk about what are successful business models and what are not successful business models. I've dealt with a lot, a lot of refurbishers over the past three, four years. As you know, my company is focused on doing work that other people do not want to do. We do the work that other companies don't want to do. And a lot of that work is work that is valuable to refurbishers. Motherboard component level repair, you know, certain you know, issues that just people don't know how to deal with on their own. And issues that if you have a trusted partner that knows how to deal with this on a regular basis, that you can make really, really good money working with. And I see uh, pretty much two models. And one of them works amazingly well, and one of them works like complete and utter dog shit. Uh, the model that works very, very well is when you find computers and you simply get them at something better than market value. So you're buying these machines for less than they're actually worth. You're finding people, you're finding people to whom this machine is worth nothing. And then you're taking it from them for the value that they have attached to the machine. And that is a great business model. The business model that works like crap is when you actually try to pay what it's worth. You try to guess what it's worth, and you try to put yourself in a bidding war with other people who do the exact same thing. This business model sucks. This is crap. This is dog shit. This is garbage. This will, wind, this will put you in the poorhouse. This will fuck up your life. This will fuck up your business. And it just doesn't work. So let's say... Let me tell you why. Let, let's say you come up with a reasonable amount that you're willing to make. Let's say you want to make $100 off of the transaction. Let's say you, this machine is resellable for $700. So let's say you buy it for $500, knowing that it's going to cost $100 to fix the problem they tell you it has. So you're going to buy for five, you're going to fix it for 100 you're going to sell it for seven. Sounds great, right? If I can do this two or three times a day, gee, I'm making six, 7000 a month. Wow, that's amazing. No, I know not. It's not, because you see what's going to happen is... You're going to buy it with this one little problem, and you're going to think it's a DC inboard when it's actually a board repair. And the price difference between those two is going to be about $100, and that just eats up your profit. And then you're going to sell the machine and the optical drive that nobody actually uses because nobody uses the optical drive on their MacBook. It uh, doesn't work. It was never tested. You never thought of to test it. But the person you sold it to truly values having a working optical drive. So now, in, in addition to making no money, now you're going to have to spend 30 40 50 bucks on this optical drive. And the thing is, when you buy the machines for what they're worth, you open yourself up to the misery and the trouble of everything that doesn't work down the line. And, you know, when, and, and the thing is, the people that I've worked well with are the people who are getting these things for almost nothing. And you made me feel bad about this. You may say, how can I turn this into a volume business? How can I compete with others and get more business if I'm always buying them at these ridiculously low prices? And the answer is, you simply don't care. Don't care that other people are willing to not make money off of their business model. You know, again, there are companies out there like Amazon does not always make money off of their business model, and they're still around, but that doesn't mean that you should seek to emulate them. Best Buy loses $480 million a year by selling shit cheaply. That doesn't mean that you should seek to emulate them. And other people may be willing to buy a 2008 model A1278 that does not power on for $370, but that doesn't mean that you should do it, too. You need to be very, very happy and very, very confident when you smile at people and say, I, we do not purchase these machines at market value if they do not function. Feel free to look elsewhere. You may find better prices elsewhere. You may find people come to you and offer you more money for the machine than we do, but this is the price that I'm offering. And, you know, again, don't be ashamed. A lot of people are ashamed. They're like, I don't really, I feel weird making an offer. And they just kind of, they actually bargain on behalf of the customer and bargain to bring the price up and they wind up screwing themselves because, again, the optical drive doesn't work. The trackpad that clicked yesterday doesn't click today, and you wind up, you wind up just going into this complete clusterfuck of where everything you thought works doesn't work. So the only way that this business model truly works is when you are either getting these things for free or when you are getting them for a very, very low amount of money. So, for example, my business recently started purchasing computers. We got the license for this about eight or nine months ago. We do not buy and sell. Firstly, if somebody comes in and says, I want to sell you this, I say, no. Why do you want to sell it to me? Why do you want to sell it to me? Because you think you're getting market value, in which case I have to sell it for a low profit, which means I get screwed if something doesn't work. Or you know that there's something fucked up with it and that it's working right now, but it ain't going to work a week from now. Whatever it is, or it's stolen. Like, no, I don't, I don't buy I only buy off of people who have left something here to have it fixed. And if, we, if we're not able to fix it, or if their parents went getting them another one or whatever. So th secondly... I don't buy anything. I will spend $100 on a computer if I know that I have to put five minutes into it, like five minutes of time to put something in the window that I will sell for a minimum 
of six or seven hundred dollars. Un- except, or I will offer you nothing. I will offer to recycle it for you, and I will I will simply offer to recycle it for free if it is completely unfixable and it's a piece of crap. And you know, if I'm lucky, I put maybe a hundred or two hundred parts in it, and I can sell it for five to seven. If I'm unlucky, I put a hundred dollars of parts into it. I sell it for five or six. It comes back totally fucked, and I have to refund the customer. Whatever. But at the very least, I spent a hundred dollars on it, so I can use some parts in that machine in something else, uh, you know, and, and be happy. And and that's the thing. This business model, it truly the refurbishing business model only works if you are making stupid fuck tons amounts of money because you are dealing with crap that has been pissed on, that has been dropped, that has been beaten. And again, how it's advertised is not how it's going to be. How it is when you first examine it is not how it's going to be next week. Don't focus on competing with other companies just to get more business. Don't make the mistake of doing business to do business. Doing business just to do business means that you buy these candy bars for a dollar, the guy next door sells it for a dollar and ten cents. So to compete, you sell it for a dollar and two cents. So you're making two cents a profit. You're just doing business to do business. You're doing business to get people in the door under the idea that I just want to get my business going now. It feels good to see customers. It feels good to be typing all these people into my QuickBooks. It feels good to have a full cash register. But you know what doesn't feel good? Not being profitable. You know what doesn't feel good? Going bankrupt. You know what doesn't feel good? Not making money. You know what doesn't feel good? running the 2014 version of Rossman Supply. I closed Rossman Supply because as good as it felt to help people, as good as it felt to do business, as good as it felt to see 300 to 1,200 boxes go out the door a day, I looked at the amount of money that I was spending, and then I looked at the amount of money that I was making, and I, and I, I damn near wanted to cry. I was being honest with myself. And I've made these mistakes. I also made the mistake of doing the refurbishing thing in uh, late 2008 and early 2009. That's how I got into doing this. And... I figured out within two months, two months, that business model was horse crap. It doesn't work. And not only are you making these little crappy $100 profits, but you're actually spending the money up front. So you're spending upfront capital on the broken shit. You're spending upfront capital fixing the broken shit. And that upfront capital is like this much compared to this much profit. Repairs are great because I spend this much up front to make this much profit. Uh, reselling stuff that I get for almost free is great because I spend this much money, like this much, to make this much money. <laughs> and the thing is, I can't make a living just buying and reselling crap. I can't, but I see it as a bonus for myself. Like at the end of the month, well, gee, great. Look, I made a couple of thousand dollars that I would not have made otherwise. I'm not trying to make four, eight, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a month buying and reselling shit. Uh, I, I make that money doing repairs, but... I, you know, I'm deaf. I'm more than happy. I'm not complaining if I get a couple of extra thousand a month just off of taking stuff that people don't want. And some of the ways that you can get people to give stuff away, again, you don't have to trick them. You don't have to bamboozle them. You could simply say, you know, uh, you know, instead of paying for data recovery, you know, what do you plan on doing with the machine? And they go, oh, I don't know. You know, I'd probably just put it under my bed or put it in my night table, put it in my nightstand, or I don't know, just give it to my dog. I had this guy, no joke. He said, I'm going to bury it in my backyard. I'm going to take this machine. I'm going to bury it in my backyard. It had a blown backlight fuse, and he didn't want to pay me to replace, like, blown backlight fuse. Are you fucking kidding me? You know, you figure out what they're going to do with it, and you say, well, if you're going to just put it in a drawer, you know, you're not going to use it. So, you know, if you, you know, if you trade it in and recycle it with us as part of our recycling program, we will give you your data on an external hard drive at no extra cost. See how that works? Or what my sales guy does, which is even better, he's like, you know, it'll be $100 to recover your data, like you leave the computer and I'll take like 50 bucks off. So, you get paid, pretty much, you get paid to put a hard drive in external enclosure. So, firstly, you're getting paid for something that my, my, my dad can do at 65 years old. Secondly... You are actually getting something for free that you can use to make lots of money. See, that's how refurbishing works when you do it right. What doesn't work is buying crap at near market value because you think it's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, again, other people may be willing to pay more money for that machine. So long as you are upfront with the customer and you say, listen, other people will probably pay more. We don't pay market value. This is what we offer. It's cool because, again, a lot of these people, a lot of these people, they got parents that are going to give buy them a $3,000 retina. To them, the walk down the block to get an extra $400 for this machine, the walk down the block is not worth $400 to them. Seriously, that is how spoiled, that is how spoiled my generation is that literally like, walking three blocks just to see if they can get an extra $400 is not worth it to them. And if it's not worth it to them, then 
I'll make that $400 worth it to me. Again, like, like the Leonardo DiCaprio says in Wolf on Wall Street, their money spends better on me. And again, I don't even mean it in the insulting manner that he does. I truly don't. But what I'm saying is that if you're upfront and honest with the customer and you say, if you put this on Craigslist, you may get three to 500 bucks, but I'm not spending more than 100 simply because that's my policy. If you explain it like that, uh, then you are truly doing nothing wrong. And again, their money truly will spend better on you because if they don't want to spend 10 or 20 minutes of their time to get four or five hundred dollars i respect that you know again i'm at a point in my life where i am more than happy to spend 30 bucks in a cab ride home than i am to spend two dollars in a subway ride if it's going to save me a half hour and i've had a long day i'm at that point where that thirty dollars truly spends better on the cab driver than it does on me and the same way that that customer's two to three hundred dollars spends better on me than it does on them because they clearly have so much money compared to their time that it, it just does, it doesn't really matter to them. So again, there are people who are going to say, you're not going to get more than 200 for this. You're not. Look at the condition. Look at the scratch. Look at the dent. Look at this. You're not going to get more than $200 for this. You might as well just sell it to me for 150 So what do you say? Oh, come on. See, those people are dirtbags. Those people are douchebags. Those people are on some, you know, uh, watching infomercials at 3 in the morning that sell books and how to be a salesman. Bullshit that I'm not really about. I'm not about lying. Again, you don't have to... The thing is, you really, you, you're going to not realize this until you're probably a little older. You don't have to be a like a wheeler and dealer and scammer and, 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 and you know big time negotiator in order to get people to agree with you. You don't have to lie. You don't even have to fudge the truth. You tell the truth and people will simply uh, listen and, and, and not care. Again, I look at them and I say, I look them in the eye and say, you will get four to five hundred dollars if you put this on Craigslist or eBay. We do not pay market value for machines here. I have a very high volume of machines I have to refurbish. As a result, I am not as interested in taking in uh, you know, new products. So I can only pay this much for them. If that's okay with you, we can offer you this much money and your data on an external drive but if that's not okay with you, pre here's pretty much the market value that you can get if you should sell it. And I'll even tell you how to list it. And they just, and the thing, again, the thing with the pendulum, the thing of like, you try to pull them to you, it doesn't matter how hard you pull, they go away. But you try to push them away, and they just come right back to you. And then seriously, that business model works really, really well. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how disgusted I was when this company, this guy used to come in and go, oh, yeah, my source gave me another shipment of eight computers. And I, I know I shouldn't be using an Italian, like Guido Soprano's accent for this, but I am Italian. I grew up in an Italian family where everybody kind of talked like that. So it's just my default accent for making fun of people. And they're like, yeah, my source, my source brought me eight machines. How busy are you looking next week? My source got 15 machines with bad logic boards. One time he actually included these papers with them. A little number scribbled on them. These little numbers are eBay item numbers. So I went on eBay and I looked. A1278, 2008 computer. He paid $400 for it not turning on. $400 for a 2008 MacBook. Not a MacBook Pro, a MacBook. That did not turn on. What the fuck? He paid $350 for a white unibody with no backlight. Like, I can't sell this in my window for more than 400 bucks. That, that's dumb. And I went through all of these. And again, what the thing I noticed with all these people with all these business models is they'll send me a bunch of business for the first month. They'll send me a bunch of business for the second month. They'll send me very little for the third month. By the fourth month, they'll start disputing every invoice. Did this really need a new trackpad? Did this really need a new screen? Did this really need a new battery? Why are you being charged for this? What do we have to do to get motherboard repair cheaper? And again, I'm not, I really shouldn't be admitting this out loud, but I was at a point where my motherboard repair tier was at something like, you know, pathetic, a joke, like 140 bucks to satisfy these people. I was fucking myself because I could not afford a staff to deal with regular repairs while I did board repairs off of 140 bucks. Uh, you know... And they were getting fucked so badly that it didn't matter what I was charging them, you know? Like, I could have been charging these people 50 bucks for board repairs. Since their business model was not successful, the business, it didn't work for them, and it didn't work for me. I was still getting bitched at. Now, I look to the customers that I have where they never complain, where I say, you need a new LVDS cable. 
Cool, just just bill me for it. You need a new battery. Cool, just bill me for it. This board's not fixable. Don't even worry about it, man. Just throw it in your garbage. When I, that, those are the customers I like dealing with. And when I talk to them about their business model, these are the people that are getting these things for free. These are the people that are getting these machines for 100 or 200 bucks. These are the people that are not going crazy trying to turn it into a volume business. And these are the people that are truly successful. And again, I try to align myself with people that are successful. One of the things that helps you stay positive and helps you stay successful, if you don't have a lot of positive uh, positivity or success in your life, is aligning yourself with people who themselves are actually successful. If I have a stack of boards to fix every day, and I have a lot of work to do, and I'm here at uh, 5.35 in the morning to finish everything that i got to do, it's very easy to become negative. It's very easy to become tired and grouchy and blah, blah, blah. And, it, and it, just the smallest little thing will can tip you over the edge, which is why I value working with people who are positive, who are successful, so that I myself can stay positive and successful. See how that works? It's easy to stay positive when you have very, very little stress. But when your stress is like all the time, all the way high, you have no choice but to surround yourself with successful, positive people. So I will actually interview people before I give them a discount. If you call in asking about board repairs, I am not going to give you a discount because you're a computer repair store. I don't give a shit if you're a grandma that don't speak my language or if you're of your best buy. What I care about is how, what your business model is because your business model is going to... Um, it is going to affect how we do business together, how you bother me, whether or not you bother me. And that's going to affect the price I give you. See, a guy who's working out of his apartment with no business license or whatever, that's just buying these things for 50 or 100 bucks and sending them to me, I'll give him a better price than I'm going to give a store that's telling them that they're fixing the computer for their customer that then sends the thing to me and then calls me every five hours when their customer calls to ask for a status update. I don't care. Again, if you could be Best Buy, if that's your method of doing business, I don't want any part of that. If you are buying shit for 500 bucks off of people, I don't want any part of that because I know how it's going to end. I know you're going to dispute every invoice. I know your business is not going to be successful. I know your model doesn't work, and I don't want to be caught up in your failure. I truly don't. I don't want to be at a point where you send me 30 boards to fix. I fix these 30 boards, and they're sitting in a fucking stack in one of these shelves because you have no money to pay for them because you got fucked over on all the broken computers you bought. And again, I've dealt with dozens upon dozens of refurbishers over the past uh, four years some of these are really small time people. Some of these are uh, are se are actually supplying, you know, companies like Best Buy with display assemblies. Some of them are, uh, you know, people working out of their apartments. Some of them are people with fancy websites that are buying 90 machines a day. And let me tell you something. Again, the people who are successful time after time after time are the people who realize that they can be honest about the fact that they're not paying market value for things. And they're the people who are not really so super eager to get that buy and make that purchase. The people who don't get caught up in the bidding war. The people who get caught up in that bidding war are the people who screw themselves. The people who go, like, yeah, I won. Yeah, I bought it. Yeah, I won. And then you realize, wait a second, it's on Amazon.com new for 90 bucks, and I just bought a used one and bid on it for $96 and $30 shipping. Like, those people lose. Uh, so in conclusion, look at your business model. L think about whether or not you fit into the first one or the second one. Be honest with yourself about whether or not you're making money at it. Again, it doesn't matter if you enjoy what you do. It doesn't matter if you have these great hopes for the future. If your business model does not work, be honest with yourself so that you can cut it off sooner so that you don't wind up hemorrhaging money, so that you don't wind up being one of these clients that calls me every single day to ask, do we really need this? Do we really need that? Did you really fix this board? Because I don't really see any flux residue on it, and you usually leave flux residue on the part that you fixed. Can we get a discounted rate if it's just a backlight? Can we get a discounted rate if it's just a Wi-Fi? Can we get a discounted rate if it's just a graphics chip? Just, just suck it. I, again, I don't want to be a part of a business model that's not successful. I will not take on clients if I think they have a business model that's not successful, which is why I'm taking the time in a 17-minute YouTube video at 5.39 in the morning before I take a taxi home to explain to you what works and what doesn't. Because I've tried these models that work, and I've tried these models that don't work. I've tried them with selling parts. I've tried them with repairs. I've tried them with buying and selling refurbished crap. And I can tell you for certain that the first business model works great. The second business model works like shit.